Hello guys and welcome to the procedural microchip tutorial series part 6. This time it's about the chip shader or CPU shader or uh, iridescent uh, diffractive holographic shader, whatever you want to call that. A disclaimer here, don't expect this to be a full-fledged physically accurate simulation of a diffraction phenomena as that would be a topic for another hours long series I guess. We are definitely faking the diffraction phenomena today. But even though it's faked, I think the result looks pretty nice, so you know what, sit down and take your popcorn, here we go. Well let's go to shading tab, um, add a new material, I'll duplicate it, uh, name it CPU and assign it to the material CPU that we have in the tab. So when we do that, uh, the tiles will actually disappear. Why is that? It's because the I copied the glass material and it had the refractive property on uh, in, the, in the material tab. So EV doesn't seem to work with two refractive materials, so if when we disable that, uh, the, the tiles will reappear. Let's, uh, let's get rid of that glass. And actually what I will do back in the geometry nodes tab, I will uh, move the group output uh, to the base plate and the chip tiles and uh, leave only that one visible. So back in the shading tab. Let's adhere a principled BSDF, we will use that one. I will start with a structure of the chip and for that I will use a brick texture. So let's adhere a brick texture, plug in the color output into the surface uh, socket of the material output and uh, let's modify the brick texture. So offset will stay at 0.5, frequency is 2, squash will be 2 and frequency 4. I will change the color to black, but th that really doesn't matter as I will later plug the uh, the socket with uh, some other texture. Okay, scale, uh, let's set it to 1, mortar size to 0 0.0125, mortar smoothness is uh, at 0 0.5, bias uh, is uh, 0 0.25, brick width is uh, 0 0.3 and row height is 0 0.2. Now let's uh, change that scale actually and let's adhere a texture coordinate node, okay. And the object socket I will pass through a vector math, uh, vector math and uh, through the scale. The scale I will set to 1000 and plug in the vector into the vector of that. That will scale it, that will, it's the same like uh, I would change the scale here, but uh, I will use that as a universal, uh, universal scaling for all the textures. Let's duplicate the node. Also what I will do is uh, adhere another vector math node, this time a uh, vector, rot or not a vector math, but vector rotate node. And uh, I want to rotate the, this texture with 90 degrees. So let's enter here the angle 90 degrees and plug the vector into the vector input of the brick texture. The color will go to uh, color one socket of the, of the second brick texture, let's say. And uh, now let's change the values. So offset here will be at zero. Frequency doesn't really matter as we have the offset at zero. The squash now will, go, will stay at two. Frequency will be six. Scale will be 1, that stays the same, mortar size is 0 0.0075, uh, mortar smoothness here is 0, bias 0 0.1, brick width is 0 0.1 and row height is 0 0.05. Okay, now that created uh, a vertical sort of tiles, now let's duplicate that. And again, plug the, plug the rotated vector into the vector input. Let's go again through all the parameters. So zero, the frequency doesn't matter here. Squash will be two, frequency six. Uh, scale will be uh, one again. Uh, mortar size will be 0 0.005. Mortar smoothness is at zero. Bias uh, will go to 0 0.1. Brick width here is 0 0.025 and row height 0 0.1. Now that will go into the color two of that socket and that already created uh, some sort of a structure here. Okay, uh, then add another brick texture, so let's copy this one. Uh, this one will have the vector, the original, the non-rotated, and the, the output will go into the mortar of the this uh, brick texture and of the first brick texture. So let's uh, plug it in like that. And let's modify the parameters a little bit. The offset will be at 0 0.5, frequency is 6, squash is 6 here, uh, frequency 12. Uh, then we have scale stays at 1, uh, mortar, smooth, mortar size is 0 0.005, mortar smoothness is 0, bias will be at minus 1. 
uh, brick width is 0.05 and row height 0.05 as well. This created sort of like a the conductive paths between the between the individual sort of components of the of the chip. Okay, another thing that I will do is uh, actually use another vector math node here. So let's adhere a vector math, change it to modulo, and replug the output. Uh, oh no, I didn't. I didn't want that. Well, let's. <laughs> I screwed up. So let's reconnect it. Uh, this one goes to the vector here, to the vector here, and to the vector here. Okay. Since we have zero, it's not uh, doing anything. So the Z will be at one. Uh, X axis will be 0 0.5 and Y axis will be 0 0.5 as well. What modulo does is it kind of repeats the structures. So if I use 0 0.25, that will start to repeat it four times on the X axis. Uh, usually we try to detail things, but here actually at the, at the chip, uh, it's just kind of useful to have the repeating patterns because the microchip is sort of uh, composed of uh, blocks that are that have kind of the same structure. I will keep it at 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So what we will do is mix two shaders together. So let's duplicate the principled BSDF and uh, we can already set up the bottom one. So the metallic will go, go to one, specular we can keep it like that and uh, I will add here a map range node for uh, roughness. So the color fruit from the brick texture will go into the value socket and that one will go into the roughness and we will set the minimum roughness to 0.01 and maximum will be 0.15. So this is the, let's say a base shader. And now we will move on to the top shader, which is, which will be sort of a pearlescent or iridescent layer. So let's connect the pearlescent layer to the output. Metallic will be one and roughness will again be, uh, be parsed through a map range node from the basic texture. Just this time it will go from 0 0.01 to 0 0.35. That will help uh, make the material sort of uh, have a spark, that, that kind of spark. If it's uh, just, uh, if the roughness is uh, I know, like 0 0.15, like we have it there, it's kind of dull. But if we increase the, the roughness to 45, 35, something like that, it will have uh, it will have this kind of glare to it. Now we have to make the base color dependent on the incidence angle at which we look at the object. So that can be achieved by uh, using a geometry node and using the incoming uh, vector. That will go to the input vector of a noise texture. And also what I will do is pass the noise through a contrast brightness and uh, boost the contrast uh, all the way to one. So let's uh, plug the output into the uh, view output and see what that does. Well, it's uh, moving around the object with the incidence angle, that's what we want, but uh, I will improve it a little bit by using a uh, mix node, mix color node, and uh, mixing the incoming vector with a uh, generated vector from a uh, texture coordinate. That will not only make it uh, move around the, uh, around the object, but also shift its shape or shift the shape of the noise. So when you have it like that, it's uh, changing also the shape. So it looks a bit more interesting. I will just change the parameters a little bit. The factor will be 0 0.6, so a little bit uh, more in favor of the incoming vector. The scale of the noise texture will be three. Detail will go to one, roughness at zero and distortion at 0 0.5. Now to mix the noise texture with the, uh, with the brick texture, I will use a uh, mix color node set to, uh, set to color dodge. So the noise texture will go into socket A. Let's set it to color dodge and uh, actually plug here the brick texture into socket B. And uh, I will change the factor to 0 0.25. Okay, so that will make it depend, kind of dependent on the, on the brick texture, but also on the noise. We obviously need to colorize that black and white texture. So let's add here a color ramp and start building it. So the the first step will be a red color with a value of 0 0.85. Now let's add here another stop uh, that will be a yellow color. So that will be 0 0.85 red, 0 0.85 green. Blue will be at zero. Let's add here another one. Uh, I don't mind the positions now. I will uh, 
I will then uh, distribute them um, evenly after I after I build all the colors. So uh, the first stop will be green. So let's change change the red to zero. Green is zero point eighty five. Then uh, we have a teal color, so that's uh, 0 on the red, 0 0.85 green, 0 0.85 blue. Now a pure blue color, so uh, that one will be 0, 0, 0 0.85. And uh, finally a magenta or a violet color, but I won't go uh, all the way like uh, uh, green, uh, red, sorry, red and uh, blue. I will. I will tone down the red color a little bit to 0 0.425 to be kind of dark magenta color. Now let's distribute the stops uh, evenly. So that will be the pearlescent layer. And uh, of course we need to tone it down a little bit with a, uh, with a hue saturation value node. So let's add here a HSV node and uh, change the saturation uh, to 0 0.8. Now we don't need to turn down the value because I already built that with a value of 0 0.85 so we can keep the value at 1. Well, now let's plug the, the result into the base color and actually the shader into the shader output into the material output. So that is the that should be the pearlescent layer with the changing colors. There's actually another way to colorize that black and white texture and that's by utilizing the hue socket. Let's separate the connection between the color ramp for the moment and uh, change the color to something that has uh, non-zero saturation. I will go all the, all the way to 1 or maybe to 0 0.85. It really doesn't matter at, uh, at which color you are, it just will, uh, it will just affect the starting color. So when you plug the color dodge uh, output to the hue socket, that will automatically colorize it by changing the hue of the base color. It also gives very interesting result and uh, I can, can, cannot decide which one is better. Uh, the color ramp is more predictable and can be can be adjusted a little bit, so I will stick with that. But I leave that up to you. If you prefer the if you prefer that uh, the hue changing, I will leave it up to you. If you want to use that, the last thing we have to do is to mix the two shaders together and build a mask for them. So let's adhere a uh, mix shader node. Plug the metallic uh, layer into the lower socket and the pearlescent layer to the top socket and the output will go obviously to the material output. Now let's make a little bit uh, more room here and uh, I will start building the mask. First thing I will do is I'll, I'll add here a uh, math node, set it to subtract and subtract the, the factor of the brick texture actually outputs the spaces between the bricks. So I'll subtract that those spaces from the main texture. Then uh, I will adhere another math node, this time set to add. Let's actually plug it into the bottom socket and uh, take the color of the brick texture and uh, pass it through a invert, uh, invert node, but actually in the color, color socket output it into the add node and change the factor to 0 0.25. Let's take a look what uh, what this gives us. And it gives a uh, it gives kind of boosted uh, actually not to the factor, but I want it to go to the surface. It gives a boosted uh, boosted color to the to the uh, surfaces of the chip structure and path between the structures uh, remains black. So that one will actually be, be metallic. So what I have to do is uh, invert, the, invert the mask by using a color ramp. And I think what I will also have to do is boost the contrast a little bit. So let's switch the positions of the sliders. Oh, that will invert the mask. And uh, to boost the contrast a little bit, I will slide the white uh, slider to the value of uh, 0 0.18. Now let's take a look what the mask looks like. And probably that is uh, what I want. So the, so the surfaces will receive the pearlescent layer and I have to mix it with something that changes uh, the, its value based on the incidence angle again. That something will be a frontal node that changes its value based on the incidence angle. 
actually the index of refraction for the silicon is 0, 4.01 so let's enter here the value and use a uh, mix node or mix color node to combine these two together the mode will be multiply and the factor will be 0 0.85 so mostly in favor of the frontal node now let's actually plug the shader result into the output and now we should have the shader pretty much done I like it, how it's uh, changing the color. And let's also test it out in uh, cycles. So let's switch the render to cycles. Oh, no, EV, cycles. And also what we have to do is change the environment texture. I will use the same as we have for EV. So that's the forest texture. Let's go to the Blender default folder. And in the data files, in Studio Lights, you can find the texture forest EXR or the environment map, not the texture, but the environment map. And let's change it. And also I forgot to change the device to GPU compute. That would take ages to calculate it on the CPU. Let's check what the chip looks like when, uh, when it's uh, inside the microchip. So let's uh, actually connect the output of the entire geometry to the output of the geometry nodes. And the first thing I think that I need to modify a little bit is uh, to move the base plate with the bottom of the cutout a little bit closer to the window. So uh, this is the EEPROM window and uh, the bottom was the first extrusion after the convex hull. So I will just decrease it to 0 0.75 millimeters and that will move the all everything uh, the bottom and uh, the attached base plate and the and the chips to closer to the to the to the glass which I think looks uh, much better. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope this episode met your expectations. With the next part, I will finish the microchip series, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't miss the final A. See you at the next video.